Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today I've created the ultimate setup guide for your R35S. Like my previous setup guides, everything will be timestamped, so feel free to jump around to the spot that you need. However, if this is a brand new device to you, I would suggest starting from the beginning as you might miss something. We're going to be installing ArcOS and I consider it the best operating system available for this device specifically. The developer is active, responsive, and there's great community support here. There's one weird thing we have to do to get ArcOS to work on most of these devices, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Now, as always, before we start, you need to have a branded SD card and a branded SD card reader. Don't use the stock SD card, throw that out, and yeah, that includes the ROM card as well. For those that missed my previous videos, they're unbranded, they're low quality, and they're very prone to failure, both for the operating system and the actual ROMs. You'll have a lot of times where it's an issue saving in certain games like Pokemon, for example. The R35S has two SD card slots. There's one for the operating system, or you can use it for both OS and ROMs, and then the second is for ROMs. If you want to save some money, you can use a single SD card, and I would suggest something like 120 gigs. I'll leave a link in the description to the one I normally use. It's a Samsung Evo. And then I'll also include a link to the SD card reader that I use as well. If you want to do two SD cards, you can do a 16 or 32 gig in the operating system slot, and then a 128 gig or bigger in the second slot. The operating system doesn't take up a lot of space. It's all your choice, there's no wrong answer here. Now, the last thing you need is your ROM and BIOS library. If you just want a big list of games and then you can curate them yourself if you'd like, head to the spot I'm showing on screen for the tiny best set, and it'll be an easy way for you to get set up with a ton of games to play. Read the instructions and grab the version that matches your SD card size. The folders in the zip are all platform folders, so you can just move over the ROMs from the folder you downloaded to the folder on the R35S SD card when we get to that point. It's really just drag and drop. Okay, so you have your SD card, SD card reader, and your ROM and BIOS library ready to go. We can move on. As far as software goes, we need 7-Zip and Rufus. We might need another program later, but we'll talk about that after. Head to the link in the description and download the portable Rufus tool. This is going to help us image our SD card with ArcOS. Then head to the 7-Zip link as well and download 7-Zip. This will help us extract the image from the compressed file. Install 7-Zip. Now let's also grab the ArcOS image. So head to the ArcOS wiki link in the description and you want to download the RG351MP image. Click G Drive or Mega to download it. Once it's downloaded, right click it and choose 7-Zip and then extract here. You should see an image file afterwards. A lot of people make this mistake of imaging the first file you downloaded, but you really do need to extract it or it won't work. Connect your branded SD card that you want to use for the operating system to the PC using your SD card reader. Open Rufus and make sure the device listed is the SD card that you have connected to your PC. Choose Select on the right and navigate to the image file we extracted and select it. Leave everything else and click Start. You might get some pop-up warnings but you can safely agree to them and click Yes. Go check on some loved ones, this will take some time. Once that's all done, safely eject the SD card and we're going to be putting it into the TF1 OS slot on the right side of the device while it's powered off and nothing is in the TF2 game slot on the other side. 
Now, two things might happen. You might get into ArcOS and everything will be okay. Or you'll get what happened to me and it's a white screen with flickering. If this is you, push and hold the power button to turn off the device, take out your SD card and put it back into your PC as we need to replace a file. Now, replacing the file and putting it back into the device might work, but if you want to be extra safe and do what I did, reflash ArcOS using the same steps and replace the file I'm about to show you, then put it into the device. That's what I had to do personally. So, when you insert your SD card back into the PC, you're going to get pop-ups warning you about certain partitions not being formatted and all that sort of thing. You can click cancel, do not click format, or that's just going to replace everything we just did. So click cancel always. Now, the problem is we can't access the partition that we need in Windows to replace the file that we have. So we have to use another program called Mini Tool Partition Wizard. Head to the link in the description, follow my steps on screen to install the free version, don't install the trial or pro version. I know a lot of people have that issue. It's just going to complicate things for you. Once you're done installing, launch Mini Tool Partition Wizard. And now we want to assign a drive letter to the partition on the SD card. Right click the boot partition and you want to click unhide partition, then give it a letter and now click apply. You should now see the drive in your PC and you can open it and see the files. Now you want to head to the description again and you want to grab the DTB file. Download it and then you want to rename it to remove the underscore and the 5. Then move that file onto the boot partition. Replace the file that's already there. Now eject the SD card and pop it into the device again. You should now see an ArcOS text logo and then a bunch of things will happen. Your device will reboot twice, just leave it alone. If none of this happens for you and you see a blinking line, reflash ArcOS and replace the DTP file before putting it into your device. It should work from there. You'll know that everything's done when you see the Celeste picture or basically the front end and you can start scrolling through. If you're doing the one single SD card method, you're basically done here and you can skip to the next section for the timestamp for putting ROMs on. Push start, navigate to quit, shut down system and click yes. Take out your SD card and put it back in the PC. Now, if you're doing the two SD card method, let's continue. Grab your ROM SD card that you want to use for ROMs, so not the one we just used for the OS and connect it to your PC. Open Rufus and change boot selection to non-bootable. You can leave everything else as default and then click start. Close it when it's done and then eject the SD card again. With the device powered off, make sure both SD cards are in with the ROM one in the game slot on the left. Turn on the device, head to options, advanced, and select switch to SD2 for ROMs. Give it a few seconds and when you get kicked back to the front end, push start, quit, shut down system and click yes. Now put your SD card back in the PC, the ROM SD card if you're doing the two SD card method or the single one if you're using one card. If you're using one card, you should see the Easy ROMs drive and you can go ahead and open that. Or if you're using the 2SD card like I'm showing, you'll see whatever the SD card was that we named. And mine is just named 128 gigs. 
This should be pretty self-explanatory at this point, but inside of this is all of the folders for every platform for this device. Now, if you downloaded the tiny best set from earlier, you just need to go in and move the ROMs from those folders to here. So GB is Game Boy, and if you have GB in Tiny Best Set, you would move all the contents in that folder to this folder. Not every platform is named the same, so you can't just copy the folders over. You can only copy the contents to the right folder. You can see my example on screen with Game Boy ROMs in the Game Boy folder. Make sure you put all your BIOS files in the BIOS folder as well, especially for PlayStation 1 or that's not going to work. If you have your own ROM library, it's the same thing, just move your ROMs over to the right folder with what you have. That's all there is to it. Once you've added the ROMs and BIOS and everything you want, you can eject your SD card, put it back in your device, and you should see everything's populated. If you run into a system that isn't showing your games, try unzipping them if you had them zipped. If that still doesn't work, then you might have the wrong file format for that system, and the ArcOS wiki tells you what emulators have the right format for the file type for each platform. So check that out, and I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. That's all I got. If you run into any issues, there's a Discord in my description and a channel dedicated to this device with people that can help. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one!